Hi guys, thanks for joining me. So this is going to be a very sort of quick overview how to for the new template that we've just brought out, which is the sitting kitty. As always, I will do a quick run through of everything that I'm going to use and then we'll uh, get on with making the project. I am, of course, working on my foam mat. I've then got my flat mat and a felt topper. You'll obviously need your template. Other tools, I'll be using my 40 spiral. I've got my multi needle and I've also got my punch tool. And not forgetting over here in the corner, you can just see my little pocket scale there. Pocket scales are really useful for weighing out uh, very small increments of wool. So that's what I'll be using. This is our sand color and I'm gonna be using between 1.5 and two grams for this particular template. That's it, that's all the tools and equipment that we need for this project. So we're gonna hop straight in and start making our sitting kitty. What I've done to begin with is I've weighed myself out 1.5 grams of sand and then another 0.5 grams. We're gonna be using the 1.5 or thereabouts to do the base layer of our kitty and then we're going to be using this extra bit to do some contouring give him him or her a little more sort of 3d the way that i like to start this template is you need to think about your end project what are you going to use this for that may determine which orientation you want your kitty to be in you may have seen some of my other videos where I talk about the side that faces the mat ultimately comes out a little bit nicer in terms of a finish particularly when you're using a flat mat so if I want my kitty to be finished facing this way then I'm going to start with it facing that way because we're going to fill this template and keep the same face facing our mat I'm going to do him finishing this way so I'm going to start with him that way so 1.5 grams of wool and I like to start uh, sort of in the extremities the little tips and uh, sort of points I'm going to pull off a pinch let me move this round so you can see it better down here and the way that I handle points is I fold a bit of the wall back and you can see you've got that rolled edge and then that rolled edge I put upright and into the template so that the rolled edge is actually following the point a few very light stabs just to get some of that fiber up into the tip you see it's not even holding down to my flat mat I'm just getting it in really really lightly and then I'm going to move my template around a little bit so you guys can see better yours will probably be more static let's try it that way oh need a bit more the idea is, so I've got that rolled edge again, and that's going up into that tip. And then you want to leave some frizz coming down into the rest of the template. So that would be your ears in. And everything at the moment is really lightly put into place not felting anything down then what we're going to do is just work around the edges don't worry too much about the middle but we're going to work around the edges and to do that I lay some fluff down so that it overhangs the side of the template then as you run your needle around you bring this 
over the top and again you get that sort of you start getting that rolled edge laying the fibers down to help you out should mean that you don't end up with quite so so much sort of wild unruly bits at the end so that's how I would do an edge like that put a little bit in his face up here and again I'm just going to roll that edge back put that rolled edge down and then just bring the fibers out to the outside with pretty much all of the templates you want to start from the outside and work towards the middle don't be tempted to stuff all your wool in and then try to move it to the outside it, it, it doesn't work okay so that's that sort of bit in there put a little bit across the top of his head it's always better to go with a slightly smaller amount adding more is a lot easier than trying to take it away Okay. And as you're laying, you know, your next bit of fluff down, make sure you've got a good overlap to what's already there. One thing I will point out, you can see there's some very subtle lumps and bumps in the head and and just here. This won't translate too well into your felt um small little lumps like that don't but they're there as a guide for you uh, to do a little bit of finishing off and contouring right at the very end so that's his head a little bit more down in that corner there rolled edge lay it down and let that frizz overlap The rest and this really is a very light very light needle very light stabs I'm barely touching my surface because we need to fill this template but not have it stuck to our surface at the end so we want to make sure that we're not doing that driving you just want to be using the tip of your needle so again, overlapping the side of the template, run it around and then bring these fibres in. Overlap that frizz in the middle. And just lightly compact it down. And what we're looking for is basically an even spread over the whole template but building it up in bits and don't worry about the weights and measures they are a guide they're not sort of set in stone so I'm going to put another rolled edge down into this little um, down in his little tippy toe just work around I'm obviously doing this quite quickly there we go so I've got it's a bit thin over here so I'll grab myself a little bit a little bit more just pop it this edge and again everything is light nothing is really felted at the moment now we come to his little tail and to do that this part here where his tail joins his body I generally find that that can be a weak point 
So what I'm going to do is make sure that I've got a good probably 20 centimetre of overlap onto his body. And take that up into his tail very lightly. And then I'm just going to add a little bit more just to that point. Oh, that's a little much. I'll put some of that off. Now, as I said, the weights and measures are a guide. So if you use slightly more than, you know, 1.5 grams for your initial lay down, it's absolutely fine. You may want a thicker kitty. Well, it depends what your, you know, your end goal is going to be. I think this guy might be, might turn this guy into a fridge magnet. I don't know. <laughs> I generally don't have any clue when I start doing these things. <laughs> so to do his tail, uh, let me see if I can get in close. And to do his tail. I'm going to put a rolled, a rolled bit, so fold it back like that and then put that rolled bit up, up into the tip. And again, I am just really lightly piercing, barely the felt topper. It's also one of the reasons why I'm using a 40 spiral. It's a very, very light needle. It's not aggressive, particularly with this wool. Our wool felts so wonderfully um, that, you know, a large needle is just too aggressive. So there's our tail in. Let's turn him back round. So now what I'm going to do is just work over his body a little bit and I've got I've got all of this left but he is a bit thin in the middle so I'm going to lay this down and allow the frizz to just blend out into the rest of the template if you try and fold wool up and place it you'll end up with these lines and things which is great if you want a line for contouring but at the moment, we're just trying to get down this base layer. So a little bit of frizz blending out towards the edges, but the bulk of it is staying in the middle. So really lightly. And you can just hear that sort of tiny little crunch as I'm just hitting that mat. I'm not, I'm not driving like this. That's really important, otherwise you'll end up with this stuck to your mat. So nice covering all in the template. And I think I've still got this little sort of scrappy bit here, but that's okay. I'm going to bring in my punch tool. Generally, I don't advise using punch tools in the template, but this is for quickness. I'm just going to go around the middle and I am there's no you know there's no penetration into the mat at all I'm just compacting these fibers down really lightly I'm going to quickly go around the edge and because we've been so light with the needle in theory <laughs> this should not be stuck to my mat terribly it should just be stuck to my mat a little bit and that's okay. The more this firms up, the less it will stick to the mat as well. So a moment of truth. I'm going to pull my template off. And don't be tempted to just grab and pull. We're just going to tickle it off nice and lightly. And you might be able to see that I've got... Let's zoom in. It's barely attached to my surface. You can see that there are just a few bits that are attached there so just tickle it off very gently 
and you will end up with something that looks like that. <laughs> it doesn't look great, but it's getting there. That's our sort of our first pass. Work everything back into the template. Just a little bit all over, get right up into those corners. And I generally find that don't try to put the template back over the project, put the project into the template. I generally find that that is an easier way of doing it. I have fought with many a template. <laughs> so that's all I've done now is I've just got it back in. I've got a little bit of a thin spot right there. I don't know if you can see, you can see there. A little bit thin. So that's perfect. I'll just grab the extra bit that I've got or a bit of the extra bit. And you'll take your time with this. Once you get the hang of working from the outsides in, the templates are really, really easy to use and you get really nice consistent results. Okay, so a little bit of a wiggle. So that was the postman. <laughs> Just scared the pejesus out of me, so there we go. Right, where were we? Okay, so we've got our first sort of even let. No, it's not that even. There's a little bit of a dip there too. So I'm just going to pop some more just in this part here. Like so. And as I mentioned earlier, I haven't turned this over yet. I've still kept that same face facing the mat. Okay, I think that's what I've got left out of my 1.5 grams. Now what we're going to do is felt this down so that it's nice and firm. go over it just in this middle part with my punch tool and you'll notice that if you do use a punch tool in the middle um, it, you kind of um, it spreads the wall out towards the edges which is a good thing because then if you get your needle zoom in if you then get your needle very vertical and go straight down it kind of puts that extra bit of fibre in the edges and just makes those edges just that little bit stronger because they've got a few more fibres in them. So all the way around the edges, whatever you do in the middle, you need to repeat around the edges. I'm just going to go around. And give it give the template a little bit of a wiggle because the flat mat is so dense and because we're not driving through this felt topper on top of the flat mat the com the whole combination means that there's very little that sticks to it so what I'm going to do now is bring in my multi needle and this is a a three needle handle I've no idea what needles I've got in here. What are those? I think they, there are 40 spirals as well. So what I'm doing now is something that I, I call a compacting technique because I want to compact the fibres down in the template. And what you do is it's tiny, tiny little stabs. We're just using the first couple of barbs on the needle and it's tiny little stabs in a little circular motion 
and it will just compact down and really compress those fibres. So that's what we're doing. And just for speed, I'm going to use my multi handle. This is now a case of just going over and over and over this until it is nice and firm. If you need to, grab a little bit and backfill. But now it is just about really firming this up. And again, I've still not turned the template over. I've still been working on this one side. And if you want just a flat kitty without any contouring, we're going to do that in a bit. But if you just wanted him, uh, you know, flat for, I don't know, a, um, a card topper maybe or something like that, then you do want to make sure that you've got one side which is really, really nicely finished. And I generally find that it's the side that faces the mat. Just go around this little bit here and then I will show you what I mean. Oh, I'm going wandering off all over the camera. So, this is the side we've been working on. You can see the pit marks and stuff. But then if you look at this side, and this side is the side that's been facing the flat mat, you've, you, you know, you've got that lovely, it's not completely smooth, obviously, at the moment. We'll refine that, but let me see if I can get my camera to focus. No, it won't. <laughs> but you can see this side is, the finish is a lot better than this side. So good side back to the mat and what I'm going to do is I'm going to carry on refining this so I'll speed up this sort of next little bit of footage but I am just going over and over and over it with this little compacting technique until the kitty is uh, is really quite firm Okay, so I have my kitty, I think, pretty firm. I'm just going to pop him out. There he is. And then this is the side that I'm going to be using as the front facing. There we go. There's the pretty much almost done now we're just gonna I'm gonna give him a bit more sort of shape once you have your kitty so that's the side I've been working on this is the side I don't think his tail is a little bit thin there but for what I'm gonna do I think it'll be all right This is the side that's been facing the mat. So this is the side that's going to be facing the person. So we've got to start off with that nicer finish. What I'm going to show you now is just a little bit of contouring. If you look, you see it's sort of raised. So it's not 3D, but it's not 2D. It's 2.5D. <laughs> It's sort of a bit of a halfway house. Um, obviously, with the thicker bits, your kitty will be a little bit more robust. Um, I opt not for putting eyeballs um, on this kitty. 
mainly because I'm really bad at eyeballs. <laughs> so if I don't have to do it eyeballs, I don't. <laughs> but you could use um, little black um, eyeballs. That's the word I was looking for. <laughs> Oh, it was all going so well up until this point. <laughs> you could get uh, probably, I don't know, maybe three mil or four mil. Um, I'll grab some uh, in a minute and, and try it and see what they look like. I haven't, uh, I haven't braved eyeballs yet. And don't forget, I do have another video over on the channel for actually making eyeballs um, that, will, that might help you out if you are like me and um, I'm not terribly good at felting eyeballs. So I tend to try and cheat where I can. So I'll do that. I'll put some little black eyeballs in this one in a bit and see what it looks like. But it's the contouring that we're focusing on. This sort of belly bump and this sort of little bit of a nose. When you're building up your kitty uh, to be uh, 2.5D, <laughs> you, you need to think about it in layers. If you're looking at it, what's going to be at the back versus sort of like his, his tail would be, you know, at the back of the picture and like his nose is going to be closer to you. And that's what we're going to do is we're just going to raise up a little kind of nose bit here and we're going to give him a, a bit of a sort of a chest because that would sort of come towards you um, as you're looking at it. You can, of course use it completely flat but I want to show you how I do this this is the other um, 0.5 grams so I've got 1.5 grams in here and this is another one point uh, sorry this is another 0.5 grams so it makes two grams in total and don't be tempted to try and roll it all up and do it all in one go. What I've done is I've broken off, and I will weigh it, just so you know how I've broken this down. This is about 0.1, so 0.1 now and 0.4. And it's this, this sort of area here that we're building up. Let me bring the other one back in. It's this bit. So his neck would be further back and then it would come out on his chest part, which is this bit here. So I hope that made sense. For this, I am actually rolling it up. We're not too worried about uh, lines. We want to get the first sort of bit of this. Uh, let me see, how do I explain it? The bump will be like this, and obviously it will gradually get higher until you reach the part where the bump is highest. So I'm just going to start by putting a smaller amount just where the bump is going to be the highest. Which is going to be there like that and then I am just going to felt that which I'll even use my my multi punch let me pop him I'm gonna pop him back in his template so now I'm working on the side that was facing the mat so I'm working on the the good side and I'm going to put it back in the template because as we add and firm up this wall it will spread and that's another thing that the template is really useful for is it helps contain your shape so you don't get too much distortion so first off we've got this sort of little little bit there and you can see see this bit here 
that's the sort of most proud part of his chest. I'm then going to pull off probably about another, oh, hang on, about another 0.1 of a gram. But now what I'm going to do is allow the frizz, just bring it up, first get it in the edge, and I'm going to bring this frizz just up into the neck a little bit, still keeping it in that section, just allow this frizz to blend out down this way a little bit, but the bulk of it is here, but I've not folded it. We're going to felt this down in place and what that will do is that will take out, um, that will start taking out the lines from the bit that we just folded. And again, I'm really light with this multi-tool. And if you can see now, we're starting to get that raised section there. And if you do, I don't know if you can see it. See, I've got a little line there. Let me just zoom in. So I've got this little line here. Now, if you want to get, if you do have a line and you want to get rid of it, very, very lightly, and I can't stress this enough, very, very lightly, just tease out and frizz out some of those fibres. Just scratch the surface like that. And then go over it and that will completely take out any hard lines that you might have. So it's a little, that's how I get rid of them anyway. So you can see we're starting to get this bump here. Still got this bit and this bit now I'm going to use which should be 0.3, yes. <laughs> So again, I'm going to just start with the finest bit of frizz up into that neck, just to start holding it in place, come down to the bottom, see we've got all of this just waving around at the moment, and we're going to bring all of that down into this area, I'm going to run around that edge. So by going around uh, these sort of parts, what I've got is you kind of put in the outline of where you know the finest bit or the thinnest bit of the bump is starting so that's this is where I'm attaching this fluff and just leaving a little bit of frizz to sort of come out into the rest of the body but I'm sort of going this is this is the area that I want that I want you in so we've got all of this here in my head, that sounded right, <laughs> but sometimes when I explain things, I listen to it later on, I'm like, oh, that doesn't make any sense. <laughs> so what I'm going to do now is just go round. and start working towards that sort of peak point. Because we've got a couple of layers um, underneath in that, that peak point, that will really make sure that this raises to, um, raises up in the right place. And needle angle uh, is something that will help you here as well straight up and down the wool will go the way you point the needle so if I point my needle that way let me zoom in if I point my needle that way the wool will go that way if I point my needle straight then the wool will, will go straight down into the area so the wool will compact in whatever way you point your needle and that's 
worth bearing in mind when you're doing contours because you want to work like that. That will help. Also the fact that we've put that underneath layer um, or we've built up that underneath in that point means that it won't go as flat as the rest of it. So again, even with my, my multi-punch, I'm following that sort of arc. And these are all little sort of tips and tricks that will, that will help you out. And that, this, this will also apply to 3D when you want to make, um, you know, muscles and standy out bits. <laughs> So there we go. There's our, I'm going to declare this sort of done. It's not done done. But we just, I have to fiddle. Sorry people, I have to fiddle. <laughs> there. Stop felting. <laughs> there we go. Oh, let me just sort out his tail. <laughs> So once you've got your sort of chest bump, and you can see, I'm, I'll get them out of the template in a minute. So we've got that chest bump and, you know, just looking at it, you can see from, you know, from flat to that there is such a huge difference. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to lightly, because I don't want to create too much distortion, lightly go over that. And we're going to do exactly the same thing now with his nose. And this, I'll, I'll weigh this for you again. It's going to be next to nothing. It's, it's like 0 0.05. So if your um, if your scales only does 0 0.1 increments, then measure out 0 0.1 and then break that in half. And again, the first thing I'm going to do is his nose is going to be in this part here. So that's his cheek. And that's his cheek. So the nose really is only in this part here. So you sort of fold up your wool. Fold and roll. So that it sort of fits in that part. Like there. So I'm just going to attach it down just to see where I'm at. So can you see, you see his nose? So I'm going to felt this top bit down. And then I'm going to point my needle that way and say, right, you need to go up there. And it looks a hot mess at the moment, but don't worry. And really all we want is kind of a nub of a nose in this part here. It looks horrendous, but bear with me. <laughs> so I'm going to come in with my multi and just flatten that out a little bit. Think about where his nose would really be. So I've got a little, just a tiny little lighter shade just popped on the end of that little nub. So we have like that. 
and again I'm just going to tease out some of these fibres just to blend out that hard line up there and if it if it is too hard a line then just grab yourself a little bit of raw, just a pinch. I do want a little bit of a line down here because that's going to define his nose. There we go. Let me just... I actually need to pop this back in the template because I think his head is just getting a little bit distorted. So let's pop him back in. And you can at any time, you know, refer back to your template. Just pop your little kitty back in. And it just brings everything back together. Then what I personally would do, let me just do his tail again, sorry. <laughs> what I would personally do is grab the tiniest wisp of a few hairs, roll it up just a little bit, Get your, let's move that out of the way, get your tiny, tiny little bit and you always need less than you think and just pop him in, just a little hint of a nose. Uh, the cat noses are wider at the top. And then they kind of go to a little bit of a point at the bottom. And this is not working out. <laughs> there we go. So I want that bit to go in that way. I want that bit to go in that way. And the nose looks round. <laughs> I'm, gosh, I'm using, see that, no, nope, focus on the needle, see that first barb just there, it's right near the tip, that's the only barb that I'm using, just to go, go that way, go that way, I'm going to make this top a little bit flatter. I'm going to, no, I'm not going to stop. I'm going to fiddle. <laughs> you could, of course, um, use a little clay nose or you can make a little wax nose or, yeah, there's all sorts, all sorts that you can do. You can not give him a different coloured nose and not make work for yourself. <laughs> there so he's got just a little bit of a nose and because we've put in that lump not happy about that line there but I'll take that out Just scratch up that surface. These are all sort of little finishing things that I won't um, sort of do too much of on camera because they're the ones that just, just take the time. But I will declare that done for now. There. 
there's your little kitty I would probably just strengthen up that part of his tail that's feeling a little weak once you're happy with it you can you can iron although ironing the contours would be difficult maybe a one of those little clover irons would work but if you're going to iron um, do try and remember that you don't want to put much pressure on because if you put pressure on it's going to knock the stuffing out of these contours just to give the head some more shape what I'm going to do is come in at that ear dip you practically you know, a hor completely horizontal needle and just go in that way remember the wool will go the way you tell it the way you point the needle so I'm going to do a little dip there and a little dip there and you see how those those ears are now a bit more pronounced and then again at the side and then at the other side and then at the neck And this is where you can, you know, put a couple of those little sort of indents into his underside of his cheeks. You don't want to go too, too hard with it, too aggressive, but it just shapes it up like so. So you've got... got your little kitty finished and for those of you who don't or haven't seen them before uh, we do things called magmies and magmies are a great little way of turning your creations into a fridge magnet Um, these also make good card toppers um, because you can just put a little washer on the inside of your greeting card. And then your kitty fridge magnet is on the front of the card and you know that you can make it into a gift so the person can take the fridge magnet off of the card and um, have it on there on the fridge it makes a, a nice little keepsake I would go around and just give the edges um, you know a little bit of a trim just to get rid of all of these really unruly bits but personally I think a little bit of the hairiness just adds because cats obviously have fur so there's your sitting kitty I also put sitting kitty on a coaster so the coaster tutorial is also on the channel as well it shows you how to make uh, a coaster so I just used sitting kitty like that I just coloured it in it needs very very little amount of wool you just need to make sure you get a good covering and the sky's the limit you can use all sorts uh, I think I said I mentioned very briefly in one of the broadcasts you could perhaps make a bookmark and just have part of kitty poking onto a bookmark or something I don't know there's lots and lots of things that you can do with this so there we go there's our sitting kitty template set or sitting kitty template it's not a set is it <laughs> that's it that's how I do the kitty you could in theory 
do him double-sided maybe I don't know I'd love to see where you guys go and what you guys do with this it's it's a fun template it really is I've really enjoyed this one and don't forget that if you're not already please do subscribe to the YouTube channel uh, hit that little bell icon that will tell you when I upload new videos we do have live broadcasts that are out and about now I'm doing those a little more regularly where you can actually come and interact those are available across YouTube and Facebook so do make sure that you join us we do have some live events as well and those are quite something <laughs> It's a whole sort of six hours of complete mayhem and, you know, there's lots of sort of makes and games and giveaways and more. So do check out the website for that, which is www.mumsmakery.co.uk. That's Sitting Kitty. Thank you very much for spending your time with me today and I wish you all a very crafty day. <laughs>